Well, hello everyone. Today I'm very happy because in this video we are going to take a closer look to the internals of this Metcal Metcal MX 500P soldering station. I'm very excited excited because these stations are my favorite ones. I have owned ones for several years now and I think they are one of the best on the market and I also would like to say a thank you for for the man who gave it to me so thank you man again um, and now let's see just a bit what kind of accessories we have for this soldering station we can choose from two different types of hand pieces as you see with fast solder tip removal replacement just put it inside and that's it you can solder or you can have these kind of thermal tweezers useful for soldering especially for desoldering small SMT resistors or capacitors or diodes or anything you can choose from many types of tips and it has a very simple interface with just only two buttons the on off and the handpiece selector switch so normally the station can power up only one handpiece at a time but you can switch them between them quite easily and fast now let's take it apart and let's see the PCB that's inside the schematic some basic working principles and yep, let's start Well, to have just a few comments, four screws are holding this big piece of aluminum enclosure together. Well, the first one is the heatsink that is attached to an internal transistor and a voltage regulator. And the other four one holds the whole close, the whole enclosure together well while this screw is very easy to take out the other four since they are quite deep in the station down this well they are more tricky to screw out but anyway yep that's it and all the screws are the same both in length and also in diameter Well, if you are looking forward to disassemble a unit or something like that, you need this kind of screw bits, these torques, but they have a hole 
maybe you can see it better on the screw you see they have a small hole in the screw bit and that kind of blocking so that's it and now let's the let's have the moment of truth well another fun fact you also have to take off this plastic shield which is used only for not only for decoration but holds the switch cap for the channel selector switch so it's it's useful not to lose it right there well while the whole station uh, looks to be very fine and high quality these car these these plastic parts are are quite shitty as you can see i also have managed to break one leg here but yep and also we have to take out these screws from the simple f-type connectors so these connectors are easily replaceable they are normal pcb solderable i think right angle connectors actually this is not the first time when i take it apart because when i got it it was broken and before i could use it ever i had to fix it so we are also going to see some modification on the board well and now so on three we are going to open it one two and and three yep one side of the pcb the bottom and the enclosure from the inside it looks like some kind of interesting aluminum alloy it's not simple aluminum as you can see it's something alloy of aluminum but even that way it, it is quite thick so four millimeters in thickness is quite good i suppose also the front panel ha has also four millimeter thickness and now after taking off the front panel we need to unscrew another six screws so these moss here in the top and four bigger one on the bottom these big ones are holding the these big four screws holding the transformer in place well to be more specific in this station you can find three different type of screws unlike the base one which had only one type of screw this has three separate screws and 
And now, I suppose, we can take off the PCB together with a with a transformer, I think. Yes, but be careful because, as you can see on the back side, we have the power cable connector, and the power cable connector comes makes contact to the board with some kind of headers and while the transformer is placed on this side of the board and also the connector is here we are supposing that it comes out harder it's heavier this this on this location the, the board is heavier on this location because of the transformer and if you are not careful you can break off chop off this part of the board quite easily so be careful maybe it is easier to take a part like this yep also be careful to the switch because this also comes out and this is the back side as you can see and also be careful after disassembling it because on this heatsink there is an aluminium rod which forces this piece of heatsink to the case through the middle screw which comes here so yep that's it we are going to discuss this when we assemble it that's it and ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. well uh, as you can see this board even without the case stands nearly perfect on the table so it is quite easy to fix and to test and to measure and to, to plug it into the mains again and again so it is quite debug friendly so we say input transformer here this big chunk right here we can see the main switching transistor mounted and its driver its pre-driver mounted to the heat sinks uh, to be authentic i'm going to, to use a pointer to use a tip as a pointer well this u4 u4 you can see it's just a moment to take out the schematic U4 it's the main the main regulator and both the LM7805 is one of those so yep that's it, U, U8 is here, U, U8 is here, this is the 5 volt regulator, um, this piece of the circuit generates the clock signal, the oscillator for the C type, the C class 
RF amplifier as you can see and this is the main transformer main output imp impedance matching transformer for the uh, radio frequency this is just a buffer capacitor after the after the input voltage gets rectified um, we can also see some logic that logic that not gate this one is this one and also we have another type of flip-flop one of them there we have a thermal switch which in case of overheat uh, it turns off the output also well you can see here is the output to the hand pieces and this part of the circuit is is just some RF stuff to be more specific we, we have two or three P filters with their capacitors um, we also so the station also measures the forward the standing wave ratio of the output signal by these magnetic shunts and when I receive this unit this very first transistor was blown away as you can see that one on the schematic is this one so Q1 was blown away which is a ZTX type of transistor well the thing you should know about the ZTX codename transistors is that they are this small packaged power transistors just like that it looks exactly the same and in my opinion they are quite underrated for this kind of uh, for this kind of uh, this kind of application because they can get hot quite easily and they go away and tada the station does not work anymore mm, yep and here we can see the fuse the mains fuse the bridge rectifier uh, what other thing the main switch mm, some capacitors the front leds some modifications made to the board and also my modification that i made on this board because i replaced that ztx pnp type transistor with some i don't remember it anymore with some transistor from the bd family and it just simply works so I don't know if you heard about these kind of 
soldering stations. Well, this tip has only two connectors and they are used both for temperature control and power delivery. Well, but how? So, the station works at around 13.57 megahertz. This is a free band on what you can make some noise and it's not regulated, that's strict and it is left open for industrial usage and as I said we have a C type, so a C type radio frequency power source uh, better said power supply or topology and well you have that 13 point something something PVM frequency square wave going inside a main switching transistor and while of course before the transformer you have some capacitor network to buffer and also it is a good idea for radio frequency applications to put some huge junk chunk of inductor and also another also a lot of other capacitors so power in And only after that supply in the Arabs radio frequency circuit, as I have shown, this is our inductor transformer, the impedance matching transformer, and this is that inductor, this big one, I suppose, yep, for filtering the output, the, the input voltage, and we have uh, this, so it comes something like this goes out to a DC blocking capacitor also other capacitors for decoupling and also it forms a capacitive divider and it has on the output two inductors one is used for filtering i think this one and the second one and here is the output and l sends and this is how the main impedance matching transformer is connected so transformer one and on the output we have our 
13 point something megahertz sine wave. A beautiful sine wave, not the one that I managed to draw. And this high frequency signal is sent to the tips. But, well, the thing is, how can you then measure the tip temperature? Well, actually, the tip, te the tip temperature is measured on this inductor. So let's make this an inductor, another inductor, let's fill it up to look like a real inductor. And that's it. And to be more easy to understand, uh, you need to know that these tips have around 50 ohm of resistance at 13 point something megahertz. But this resistance this impedance, better said, is not constant. Actually, as the temperature rises, the tip impedance, I think, I suppose it's decreasing, it's decreasing or increasing, it really doesn't matter. I don't remember now, but that's not uh, the point. Well, the point is that together with this inductor, which always stays at a constant, at a constant impedance, it has the same inductance because its physical properties are not changed over over its usage. We actually get at the end and let's so this is L2 and this is the tip and to the ground and actually the voltage drop the amplitude from the ground from the starting of the tip so after L2 it does change and this forms as I mentioned a simple voltage capacit inductive impedance divider I think and that's how the temperature is monitored and as the tip heats up its impedance decreases and from the f it has a feedback loop that comes from around here to the divider and that's how you can calculate and measure the reflected power from the tip and when this happens when the tip heats up, it turns off, actually it reduces the output power of its voltage of its, the voltage of its regulator, this one, as you can see, that LM, LM25, Six seven HVT or U U four and I think that's it.
So, as a conclusion, as I try to explain, as the tip heats up, it changes its impedance, and that's how the station knows that it has to reduce its supply voltage to the C-type RF radio frequency amplifier, and that's how you manage to control this station as it is, and yep. If you Google this document, Metcal MX500 technical documentation, well, this is not the official one, but in this one, you can get some more some more useful informations to debug it. You also have its layout and at the end you have also the bomb of this iron. And now let's try to mount them together. For that, don't forget to put some fresh to put some fresh thermal grease well don't forget to apply the thermal grease and I'm going to apply it with a screwdriver. I'm just going to put some on it. As you can see. Also, the next side. Oh, which one? Yes. As I've said before, get prepared, get prepared to put back. I'm not going to touch it by hand, but to put back this piece of aluminum inside, which is not on, but we have to find perfect, perfect handle, and that is as not as easy as it as might look, or I don't know if it looks easy or not. The thing I know, uh, and I got it inside, and now put the whole thing back together. Uh, be careful not to touch the Thermal grease and -da, to arrange to arrange the button, the switch, and that's something also a bit tricky to put it back. Because I have only two hands and well it's yeah it is let's call it out it's a pain in the ass also to take apart to put it back together but yep My biggest problem is I want to show it how it comes apart and how to take it back on the camera, but it would be easier to mount it on my lap. So that's why it goes a bit harder than usual. 
and be careful to mount these connectors from the main input correctly and yep now we just have to put back a few screws that holds the PCB together all right here Fuck. another one just here but uh, my recommendation is when you are putting multiple like your putting multiple screws to something uh, do not tighten them one by one uh, I think you should put all of them inside like to almost to its end and leave it loose and just after just after putting all screws almost to the end tightening them almost to the end after that tighten them them more And now we can put on the front panel. And to left, this switch. So, right, this is somehow checked. And that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, share, or subscribe. And see you next time.
Well, thank you for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to share, to subscribe, hit the like button, and see you next time.